In mathematics, a statement is some mathematical sentence, some collection of mathematical symbols that we know to be either true or to be false. So for instance, we can consider an example like the statement that 5 is greater than 2. Now, we know that this is a true statement. So 5 greater than 2 is going to be true. We can also write down statements that are going to be false. So for example, I can have the statement that 2 is greater than 5. Now, we know this is not true. This is going to be a false statement. And it's worth noting, sometimes people feel a little bit uncomfortable in mathematics writing down a false statement. But there's, there's nothing about this. I can write down that 2 is greater than 5. I'm wrong to write so. Or that this statement is, is a false. But it is sort of like a grammatically correct sentence. I can write it down. It's just that its value, its truth value, is false. I can also write down stuff in mathematics that aren't statements. So for example, consider this statement. This non-statement, I should say. X is greater than 2. Well, this might be true. Might be false. I don't know what the answer is because I don't know what x is. So this is not a statement here. At least, it is not a statement as written. It might be that in some larger context we know what the value of x is. We may have previously solved and, and x is a placeholder for the number 5, in which case it would be true. Or maybe x is a placeholder for the number 0, in which case it would be false. But if I have no context for what x is, x is just some variable, then the, this claim, this sentence, that x is greater than 2, is not going to be a statement because I don't know whether it's true or false. And the p, the q, and the r that I write down, these are just sort of uh, a way to give a, give a shorthand for my larger statement. My statement, for example, that 5 is greater than 2, I don't necessarily want to write down 5 greater than 2 every single time. And so I can just use the shorthand by saying p is the statement 5 greater than 2. Now we need to learn a bunch of new symbols that are relevant for logic. Uh, the first of these is this sort of tilde, and it refers to not p. And what I mean by not p is that if I have a statement like 5 is greater than 2, not p is the statement that 5 is not greater than 2. Indeed, it is whatever the statement was, whether it was true or false, taking not of it alternates these two things. The second of these, this sort of weird wedge thing, it stands for P and Q. So this is a new statement, and it is a shorthand to say that this new statement is the claim both the first statement P and the second statement Q. And finally, this third one here stands for OR. It says P OR Q. So this is just a little bit of fancy notation that we're going to use all of the time in this course. Not P, P and Q, and P OR Q. And I have these three different symbols to denote that. So let's see how this works in the context of an example. Let's try to analyze this statement. My shirt is gray, but my shorts are not. And if I back up a little bit, you can see I, I've got sort of a tan or a beige shorts going on here, and I've got my gray shirt. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that there's sort of two pieces to this connected by the word but. So the first is that we have this, my shirt is gray, and then I have this, this word but. We're going to have to deal with that in a moment. And then we say my shorts are not. And I'm going to try to give, uh, two different names for this. The first one, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to call this P. And I'm going to say that P is going to be the statement, my shirt is gray. Now, for the second of these, my shorts are not gray, well, there's a, there's a negative in there. There's the word not. So what I'm actually going to do, and we're going to see how this is going to work in just a moment, is I'm going to make Q be this statement, but without the not in there. So I'm going to say this is, my shorts are gray. So I've got these two statements, P and Q. My shirt is gray and my shorts are gray. And then the claim that my shorts are not gray is like negating the statement Q. Indeed, 
If I say it's not true that my shorts are gray, I'm saying my shorts are not gray. So I'm going to come here and write not Q for that statement. Note, by the way, that, that there isn't the word gray inside of here, but in English, when we line things up like this, the implication here is that because I got the word gray over there, it sort of bought into this statement over there. Sometimes in English, we're not super precise with things. But, but we really do mean here, my shorts are not gray. Now, the final thing that we have to deal with is how do we deal with this but which is hanging out here. Now, if I had replaced this with the word and, I think it means the same thing. My shirt is gray and my shorts are not. Uh, indeed, but and and logically are going to be basically the same thing. In English, sometimes we use but instead of and when the, the but is somehow surprising. You've set the pattern of being gray, but it's surprising to us that the shorts are not gray. There's sort of a, of a, a setup of expectations in English when we use but instead of and. But, but logically, they really do mean the same things. You're saying both of these statements are simultaneously true. And so I'm going to go and put this all together as saying this is P and not Q. And that is the logical form that this particular sentence has.